Well hello there and welcome to the channel and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the five. It's the five mistakes to avoid when growing and planting the Opuntia cactus. Yes, this wonderful thing is surprisingly tough and later on in the video I'm going to be talking to you about two species that you can grow outside all year round in your English garden with its wet, windy, freezing, cold, horrible, overcast, rotten weather uh, and will survive until the following year where it look great. Okay, before we even start with the first thing to avoid, just want to show you this. Uh, What's that, honey? Well, it's a pad from a Opuntia, the old prickly pear. Now, the thing is, you don't seem to be able to find these very easy in your garden centres, and there's a reason for this, and a reason for that I'm just about to come to, but I also do like to do a little bit of unpacking, so uh, let's see what we've got. Got this from uh, eBay, but mm -hmm. equally you can look at Market Facebook Place, that's also another good place to go. Um, <laughs> do you read Facebook Marketplace? I know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Marketplace, that is my new thing. Okay. Right, okay, well, do you know, it seems quite well packaged. It's mm. so careful handling yeah. these. Should we wear gloves? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, Ooh, yeah, that's quite big. You definitely should be wearing gloves on that. Should we put the gloves on? Not just yet. <laughs> oh, we'll do. Okay. Or I'm gonna, or I'm gonna make a big mistake very really soon. Yes. Very early on, right. Have it. Okay, it doesn't quite look like the one in the picture. I'll be honest, straight away. Oh, it never is. It's not the one. It is not the one in the picture. So that's already annoyed me straight off the bat. Yeah. Right, okay, it's rooted though. I did not expect that to come in rooted. But there you have it, rooted it indeed. Yeah. Oh, right. that's great. Okay, now it's glove time. The problem with handi handling oh. Opuntia cacti is uh, not the spines that you can see, yeah. it's the glockids, which are very, very fine hairs and they're barbed as well. Yeah. So if, uh, and, they and they detach very easily. So the moment you touch it, They'll be stuck in your skin and they're incredibly irritating. Yeah. So glockids is the first mistake to avoid. You do that? They're almost impossible to get out. You just end up with these horrible bumps and sores and they just hurt for weeks. It's, can't, we can't it's not good. You can't rub them out. They're yeah. stuck in there. Oh, and, they're, and horrible. they're horrible. Yeah, you just feel this bump and they just, yeah, splinters stuck in your hand. Yeah. So like I say, it's not the big spines, it's the it's small the spines. Ones. It's the glockids. Absolute pain in the neck. So when we're handling it, and I haven't done it so far, but I haven't got any of my skin as far as I can tell, always wear gloves. So I'm going to touch this last. So um, mm -hmm. so that's the first mistake to avoid. Always wear gloves. Always avoid glockids. The, uh, um, it's got that backward spine thing. Uh, barbed. 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 Yeah, barbed. Uh, but we're going to start off with, uh, with potting on. So the second mistake to avoid is getting the soil environment wrong. And um, you'll know as well as me that these cacti, most cacti um, come from uh, the, um, the, the, the South America, so you're looking at around Mexico, um, mostly around Mexico, and as such, Mexico, very very hot, very very sunny, very very dry. So you want to make sure that your uh, your soil is is relatively well drained, because if it if it's, it becomes waterlogged, you have problems with uh, root infections, and they can easily kill it off. Not only not only can you cause problems with it being too wet just with the roots, but also they can swell up and they can split. The, uh, the stems or, or the pads in this case. So you'll be really careful that you don't overwater and you can mitigate that by having porous pots, like, like a standard terracotta pot, and by using a free draining uh, compost, add loads of grit, add loads of sand to it. So to start off with, I'm gonna put in some uh, gravel in the base of my pot. Because excellent drainage is key and, uh, and just a little thing that you might want to be aware of is uh, they do like a pansies do like a slightly acidic soil. Mm. they like it around about um, I think 6 6.5 to just over 7 so so acidic to neutral so rather than using a regular uh, multi-purpose compost I'm going to use a ericaceous mm. uh, because these are around about 6 okay. So, there you go. 
horticultural sand. I'm going to add to this, mix it in. Okay. Probably about 20, 25 percent, 30 percent, and uh, and I'm just going to shoot off while it's raining. And uh, oh, I'm still up here. Shoot off while it's raining, and <laughs> and get the actual uh, tool that I need to do this. A few moments later. All right, so I just mix it right up. Get a little bit in there. Get a bit in there. Right now, before I plant, now I have to wear these gloves because we're handling them. Oh, they're just your colours, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they go in my <laughs> red face. Okay, so all right, as I, um, just just want to show you something here. Now you see, there's like a line that goes across here. Now that shows the the soil line of when it was originally potted. So what we want to do is 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 maintain this soil line. So I'm going to pl pick it. So this is the risk. This is the risk. Stop handling these, and then suddenly you find your you got a handful of spines. That's probably a bit too much, actually. Let's take some of that. That's just a surprising amount of root in it. I really, I was just thinking that. There's I, loads, isn't it? I really wasn't expecting to have any no. root. I thought I'd just come That's in as great, a cutting. Isn't it? Yeah. You, I mean, take your time on this because you want to get it right. I want it about uh, an inch below the surface of the pot, that line. That's about right there. Okay, so carefully. Okay. Careful. 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 Just want to make it too easy for myself. So, how big is this apunti you're going to get in the next year? Well, okay. It all depends on which Apuntia it is. Now, I asked, when this was being sold, it was just sold as Apuntia, nothing else, no species mm -hmm. name. So I wrote to the guy, I said, can you tell me what a species this is? And he said it was, um, uh, was it Ficus indica? So it's the uh, Indian fig version of it. So the Ficus is, is the genus for fig and indica mm -hmm. means Indian, but not India as in the continent of India. Uh, like in in um, West Asia, but uh, as in Indians, as the American Indians, as when yes. Columbus yeah. discovered the Caribbean islands and thought that he'd found a new passage to India, which it wasn't. So that's why it's called um, Fy uh, Opuntia ficus indica. Okay. But and and these get big. These get. Big. I mean, looking at this, looking at mm. what I think he thinks it is. This is a plant that can go to a meter, two meters tall, um, and as such, you need repotting yeah. on. So. When you're choosing your pots, make sure you choose a pot that you can repot from easily and not one with a neck. And let me just quickly show you what I mean by that. I'd like to say we've learned this the hard way. Okay. So this is what not to do. Yeah, so this is a, an agave, par a Paris agave. Yeah. And you see it, it turns in. Yeah. Which means I can't easily get it out. Without disturbing the roots, yeah. No, so I'd have to cut. Yeah. And it's getting bigger and bigger. It's, it's going to be a struggle. I either have to cut it out or I need to smash the bowl to get it yeah. out. So because you know this is going to get bigger, yeah. it needs to come Dead out. Straight. It's in a straight pop. Yeah. Pop straight out. Yeah. Oh, look at <laughs> the size. What's the size of those? The spines on that. Wow. I just think it's good. Nah. There you go. So, and then we just need to push that down to that original line, and that is then the job for this done. This will go into the greenhouse simply because uh, you know we have a lot of rain uh, in this country over the autumn winter period, and I want to keep it dry. So in the greenhouse it will go. You can bring it indoors, great as a house plant uh, for a while, or keep it outside under the eaves of your house in a rain shadow. Rain shadow. Rain that shadow. There? That's great. Yeah. There you go. That is planted. And hopefully, come the spring, we'll expect to see new little babies on new it. New growth coming up. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that leads us to mistake number three to avoid. Now you may be thinking, Simon, can't you grow a, a puntiers uh, outside over the winter? And the answer is well. 
on the whole ish but there are definitely two that really do really really well outside we know uh, through anecdotal evidence and from what is being told to us through the books that Opuntias can tolerate extremely, extremely cold temperatures because the winters in Mexico can be extremely cold. So they should be able to cope with temperatures down to about minus five, minus six. Although anecdotally, as I said before, some people say they can go as low as minus 30. It seems a little bit of a stretch of the imagination. And if it does survive, what kind of conditions are it going to be in? Anyway, we don't have those temperatures down here on the south coast. Um, but there are two two species that you want to look at if you want to keep them outside and grow them all year round this is, and you treat them the same as you would do a big agave so uh, the first one which is the one that I would suggest is the the most ornamental of the two and that was Engel, Engelmann's Apuntia which is Apuntia Engelmannii and, uh, and the second one is um, It's Humifusa. I think it's Humifusa. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not. It, it's more cold tolerant. It's more wet tolerant. Uh, but it's one of those sort of ground cover ones, and and I don't particularly like those. I don't think they're very interesting. Um, but they will take cold. They will take the wet. They will take frost conditions. But Humifusa is Humifusa. Humifusa. Uh, it is. Um, I don't think it's attractive. But if you're if you're going solely on ability to cope with an English winter then that's what you want to go for but I'd go for the Engelmann the Engelmann's Apuntia simply because it is also more wet tolerant but all you need to do is put it in the full sun uh, keep it in a sheltered position and then provide a rain sort of shelter over the winter period so if you're looking to grow them outside those are the only the really two that you could think of keeping outside all year round in the UK. Humifusa Hey, hey, It's just a weird name. It's a senior moment. Ah, uh, mistake number four. <laughs> Get a new memory. So, mistake number four. Um, a lot of people like myself will bring their cacti out into the garden over the summer period to get the best out of them and of course a lot of cat not a lot of cacti, some cacti and succulents you can keep outside all year round like this little agave americana here. Not so little. Not so little. But you need to put them in the right position and as I said before these are from Mexico they need to be in full sun and they need to receive as much sun as you possibly can provide them all year round. So if you're going to keep them outside like I say of the examples that I gave you the Humifusa I hate that Humifusa and the uh, Engelmanns then you keep it outside you keep it in full sun you keep it in a sheltered position and if you put it into the ground directly you're going to leave it there you need to dig a fairly big hole make sure it's a nice square hole as always do and, uh, and backfill that with gravel because drainage is key with cacti over our winters drainage is, it is paramount you need to make sure you, you knock that right on the head so going back to bringing out your uh, house plant cacti and the punches. If you're going to bring them out into full sun, you can, but you can't just take them straight out from the house and put them straight out in full sun because they'll be soft. It'd be like you being indoors over the winter and then going on a trip to Egypt. You'd just be completely burnt. You've got to build up your resistance to the, the sun level. So with cacti, with opuntias, you need to give it about 10 to 12 days of gently hardening them off to full sun conditions. So you start them off in light shade and over the days you move it further and further so you give it more morning sun more evening sun and at the end of the uh, the 10 for 10 days for two weeks then it will quite happily cope with full sun so position is uh it's i'd say full sun but if you're bringing it from indoors you've got to allow it to acclimatize full sun okay the fifth mistake to avoid and it's probably one of the biggest headaches that growers have when growing um, not only just cacti, but actually predominantly apuntias. Apuntias are of quite prone to this, and that's merely bug and various aphids. It's an absolute pain in the ass because it's a greenhouse pest. And because we've had this greenhouse pest for decades, um, they build up resistance to the, uh, the, the the regular pesticides that you used to get. So you get something like this, which we did have it on, and mm. I don't know if you can see. You can see some residual sort of uh, looks. This is why this is outside. It, you know, I can't keep it in the greenness with others because I don't want it to transfer. But you can see some little markings uh, of it. Um, it's difficult. It's, because of pesticide resistance with mealybug, it's really hard. And if you have a big infect, inf infestation of it on an Apuntia, chances are your best bet is just to bin it. Bin it, burn it, get rid of it. 
uh, you can apply it. <laughs> there are predators that can take it out. Well, they don't take it out, they'll, they'll control it to a minimum level. Mm. And, uh, and uh, the predators that are available tend to really work at their best during the, the summer period where it's warm and they're active enough. So it doesn't work fully, so you'd have to use it as part of your management program. You can apply like a uh, pyreth pyre from spray, but it, it doesn't stick to the plant. For, for too long, so so you've got re repeat applications. There's also you've got to try and get rid of waxy covering of the uh, really aphids. So it's a bit of a struggle. You try things like, like oils, like neem oils or vegetable oils, mix that with water and spray that on. But um, luckily, luckily, uh, we have got a, a new a new batch of um, I think Nicotioids. Not sure if that's the right word, but there are there are some good chemical treatments out there at the moment um, that will n knock it all out. You know, so we I've sprayed it with this. Let me show you the one we've got. You know, this one there, uh, Provido do one, uh, which, which isn't bad as well. So there's a few out there. Uh, I'm not being paid to show you this one, but we've used this one, it's worked okay. So it has kind of knocks it on the head a bit. Uh, I might need a second application. It's because it's a systemic insecticide, isn't it? So it's actually taking, the plant's taking it inside the plant. Right. And so, you know, is every time that a really bug or something bites into it going forward it's uh, it's got the chemical there so. yeah but now the good thing with this is that so long as it's in dry conditions as we've all you can't tolerate, uh, it will tolerate very cold conditions and conditions that are so cold that it will kill off the mealy bug because the mealy bug is a like a warm warm weather sort of uh, insect so with the apuntias and with a lot of the cacti if you can keep them outside and you can get it cold enough because in this country we do get quite mild winters. But if you have a, have a good good cold spell like last year, when we had temperatures down to minus seven, minus eight, then a lot of these greenhouse pests can be killed off. But uh, it is a problem. It's a particular problem uh, like scale insects, will you, with it, on a punch of species. So you just got to get your eye out, treat it as soon as you can. You know, take it out if it's in a greenhouse with other cacti. Take it out because you know it can spread. So. Woolly aphids, big mistake to avoid. Keep an eye on it. Do what you can. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you uh, if you would uh, want to add anything else to uh, regarding apuntias or scale woolly aphid, the best way to treat it, put those in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.